Alright, welcome to a special episode of Dave Makes Food. Today I'm going to be introducing everyone to the greatest dining experience in the world, Hot Pot. Hot Pot is a style of communal dining that originated in China. It's commonly believed that various vendors would come together at the end of the day with what they didn't sell and boil everything together in a very strongly spiced broth to mask any unpleasant odors. Obviously today's modern hot pot restaurants don't serve you the leftovers, and most have a very large selection of fresh and freshly frozen ingredients. This is just a small preview of the things you can order. Now since hot pot is my favorite dining experience, I'm going to make it my new side quest to rate every hot pot restaurant in downtown Toronto, starting with my number one favorite. La Yu Yi Shao uh... Liu Yi Shao Hot Pot. Is that what is that? Now the first thing you're going to need for your optimal hot pot experience is find a partner or group of people with good appetites. Most hot pot places are all you can eat, and bringing people that can eat a lot allows you to order a larger variety of ingredients. Good conversation is nice to have, but you can also easily get that outside of a hot pot restaurant. Don't forget, you're here for hot pot. But if you're fortunate enough like me, you'll have people you can call your best friends slash hot pot associates. This is Steph and John, my best friends slash hot pot associates. John is so famous in the hot pot world, one of the largest chains based their logo off his very hand. I'm just kidding, that's a joke. The thumbs up is based on their mascot. But their mascot actually was based off John. Anyways, now that you've assembled your hot pot crew, you're gonna have to pick a location. As mentioned, this is my favorite, Liu. The Oi Chow. Really should know the name by now. I go literally every week. Now this is certainly one of the cleanest and most well-maintained hot pot restaurants in Toronto. It also has some of the best service. Good service is nice, but the food is usually all that matters in Chinatown. Once you've sat down, the first thing you're going to have to do at a hot pot restaurant is choose your soup broth. You'll have the option of small individual pots, or a larger shared pot. The larger pot is cheaper and generally better because you can fit more stuff in at a time if people don't mind sharing. Okay, time to pick the broth. The original broths are the chicken and pork bone broth with Chinese herbs and the spicy soup base. The spicy broth is similar, except with the addition of lots of chilies, chili oil, and Sichuan peppercorns. And the premium version contains beef tallow. I've tried most of the broths here, but my go-to is the tomato soup base. And my 100% favorite combination is half tomato and half spicy. As many people know, soup is my absolute favorite and these two broths on their own are amazing, but even better when mixed together. Broths are also unlimited at all hot pot restaurants. Once you've ordered your soup bases, it's time to order what you want to eat. Liao Yixiao Hot Pot definitely has the largest ingredient selection from any hot pot restaurant I've been to with probably around 100 different ingredients. Let's start off with the meat selection. The two most popular choices are definitely the sliced marbled beef and sliced New Zealand lamb. These are sliced extremely thinly so they cook quickly and are always insanely tender. And I know food always looks perfect on the menu, but it looks the exact same in person here every time. Now the meat is good, but what I really come to hot pot for is the seafood. And the fresh green vegetables such as spinach, watercress, and chrysanthemum shown here. But there are so many options to pick and choose from, and don't forget, unlimited. Alright, so now that we've ordered our soup base and ingredients, it's finally time to eat, right? Wrong. It's time to head over to the sauce and appetizer bar, where you can pick snacks like fried peanuts, seaweed salad, fruits, or even pickled chicken feet. There are tons of ingredients such as sesame paste, soy sauce, garlic, cilantro, fresh chili as well as oil. The list goes on and it's up to every diner to make their own favorite blend. My favorite sauce is a mixture of black vinegar, soy sauce, sesame oil, fresh chilies, garlic, green onions, cilantro, sugar, and MSG. Okay, now that we've gathered our sauce and snacks, we can finally eat, right? Oh, come on! Wrong again, it's 2023 and we've touched things in a public area so it's time to go and wash our hands like civilized hot pot diners. Where you'll notice this restaurant has amenities such as things and even stuff. 
A few moments later. Now that everything's arrived, it's finally time to eat, and there's not much to it. You just take your favorite ingredients, cook them in your delicious broth, and eat them. The only thing I will say are things like leafy greens or tofu items don't really go well in the spicy broth since they soak up the oil on the surface layer. But then again, there are no rules at Hot Pot, this is a 100% safe space. Literally just eat your meal however you enjoy it the most. But I will recommend cooking the noodles at the end of the meal since the broth is infinitely better after you've cooked all your favorite ingredients in it. Now as far as my rating scale goes, I'm going to rate all these hot pot restaurants on five different criteria starting with broth flavor, quality of ingredients, sauce and snack bar, service, and value, giving us a total score out of 50. Leoi Shao Hot Pot has the second best tomato broth in downtown Toronto in my opinion, so I'm going to score this an 8.5. Now as far as ingredients go, they also have the largest selection of ingredients and the highest quality of any all-you-can-eat hot pot restaurant I've ever been to. So for ingredients, I'm going to give them a 9. The sauce and snack bar here is pretty complete and has all the conventional sauces as well as some unusual ones. They also have fruit and traditional Chinese desserts such as grass jelly, fried buns and condensed milk, and white osmanthus jelly occasionally. So I'm going to give them another 9. As for the service, the broths and ingredients always come out before I've made my sauces, gotten my appetizers, and washed my hands, so they get a 9 for service as well. I want to point out, I always go off peak hours so it's not busy. This restaurant is pretty empty here, but it's full with the wait every single night at dinner time. And last of all, we'll go over the price. One share large pot with two soup bases for two adults and one bottle of beer cost $84.80 Canadian before tax and tip. After tax, tip, and subtracting the beer brings it to a total of approximately $100 or $50 each, which really isn't a bad price for an all-you-can-eat with very good cuts of meat and seafood these days. And if you hot pot properly, you should only eat one meal that day anyways. Remember, it's all you can eat, not all you should eat. I'm giving Liaoi Shao Hot Pot a 9.5 for value because I can't really think of any other all-you-can-eat restaurants, not just Hot Pot, but in general that cost less than $40 per person these days. Giving us a total score of... Alright, that's my review for my current favorite Hot Pot restaurant. Liaoi Shao Hot Pot. Let me know below in the comments if you've been here or know a hot pot restaurant that you think is better in downtown Toronto. I hope everyone gives Hot Pot a try. For myself, it's the ultimate group dining experience just slightly edging out Korean or Japanese barbecue. It's a great meal on its own, but it's even better shared with friends or family. As always, I want to thank everyone for watching and supporting my channel, and if you enjoyed this video, please click like and consider subscribing so that I can live out my dream of traveling the world and reviewing Hot Pot restaurants. I'll see you tomorrow for a food recipe, but I really do intend on raiding every hot pot restaurant in downtown Toronto. Hey Steph, what do you think about hot pot?